If it says starting, it says we're on air. It, sh it says it's live. Okay, let me ask you guys a question if you're out there in internet land. Can you see me right now? And uh, can, you, can you chat with me or somehow? Let's try to figure this out. Oh, here we go. Can you see me? <clears throat> Hang on, guys. Thanks for your patience. Okay, th listen. This says that it's broadcasting. Maybe there's a live time and it's delayed. You should just go. Yeah, but that's not good. Are you connected? Hang on, guys. Yeah, it's on. Oh, yeah, it's on. You're tripping. you got to press the play button. <laughs> yeah, it's on. All right, guys, so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and get, yeah, you see the little play? You press play in the middle of the screen, and then the video plays. That's the way it works. All right, if you're joining us out there in Internet land, welcome. we got a bunch of crazy real estate professionals here. Everybody say hello. Okay, and we're going to talk about a very, very, very important topic. Uh, if you're taking notes, I want you to write down two words, cost, well, three words, cost versus value. Cost versus value. Last week, we were all at the uh, Mike Ferry Superstar Retreat, and there's something that happened while I was there at the retreat that made me think to myself, oh, my God, there's a lot of people that struggle with the issue of cost versus value. And let, me, let me tell you what I mean by that. We as human beings, we, we have a certain relationship with the subject of money. We, we all have some sort of a paradigm or we all have some sort of a belief system when it comes to money. Who would agree with that statement? Yes. Anybody here? Okay, good. And so here's what typically happens. We either are operating from cost when we make decisions about money or value when we make decisions about money. Okay. And let me tell you, or let me give you a little bit of an insight what that looks like. Typically what that looks like is there's a purchase that you can make. And the first thing that you ask yourself is, how much does it cost? You're at a restaurant. Matter of fact, you're at a fancy restaurant. You're at like a really nice restaurant. And the first thing you do is, ay Dios mío, let me look at the prices. <laughs> right? Well, that's because you have a cost consciousness, meaning the way that you process information has a lot to do with the price that things have on it. Okay? Then there's a value-based consciousness. What does that mean? It means you go into a nice restaurant and you go, you know what, I don't really care what the cost is. I want to get like a nice steak because that's going to provide value for my belly. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of different ways that this happens. Well, what, what started happening, guys, at last week's retreat was that I started noticing that I think that people who are cost conscious don't really understand the true cost of their decision making process. And what I want to do to you with you today is I want to discover, you know, wh what that's like and most importantly, I want to discover how much it's costing you. How much it's costing you in your life? How much is it keeping you from achieving your goals when you're thinking cost versus value. So what I did is I have a couple of notes that six key points that I want to just cover with all of you. And the first point, I want you to write it down just like this, please. We can choose to focus on what something costs. We can choose to focus on what something costs. Or we can choose to focus on the value we will receive. or we can choose to focus on the value that we will receive. Either way, guys, it's a choice. Either way, it's a choice. So, so here's what I'm going to give you an example that all of you can relate to. Um, we, we do a pretty good job here at this office at helping people to increase their production. Who would agree with that statement? Yes. Matter of fact, if you've increased production by being here, raise your hands. Everybody, everybody raise your hands. Okay, good. Good. Perfect. Okay. And it's it's pretty amazing how 
people like, for example, Veronica Inigas. Veronica, how, how far away do you live? Um, about an hour. About, a, about an hour, hour and 20 minutes. Okay. So Veronica Inigas has made the decision to drive an hour, an hour, 20 minutes here to this company. Why? Because of the because of the value. Do you think that Veronica passes other offices along the way here? Yes or no? Yes. Could they be a lot closer? Yes or no? Yes. Oh yes, absolutely. But there's some value here that she sees and it's very important to her and that's why she decides to come here. Guys, there's folks like in Glendora or San Dimas who don't see that value or San Bernardino, or Fontana, or surrounding cities who don't see that value. Because there's two types of costs that we are mostly concerned with. Everybody write down number one, money. Money. Last week, I had the biggest honor I've ever received while we've been open as a company. I had a gentleman from Detroit, Michigan say, you know what? Um, I'm seriously considering packing my stuff up and moving to California to be a part of your company. And I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, well, yeah, I, I am. I think, you know, being around you guys, from what I see on Facebook and all this stuff, you guys are pretty fired up. I'm thinking about coming on over, and I'm like, man, if I can get people from freaking Fontana to come over, like, <laughs> she's Louise, you know what I'm saying? Right? But that was an honor because you guys got to remember something, guys. We as human beings, we're all, we're just bodies that are controlled by this little thing called our mind. And our mind, it's pretty crazy the way the mind thinks. The mind, when it comes to cause, is concerned with two things. Number one is money, and the second one is, guess what? Time. time. Who said that? Money and time. That's what they're concerned with. Okay? And a lot of times what will happen is, we don't understand this, but the second point I think is going to clarify a couple of things for you. Write down, when we choose to focus on cost, when we choose to focus on cost, and by the way, I know this is about to be a very sensitive issue and a sensitive point, but you need to work with me here because this is going to challenge a lot of the ways you, you operate and, and it, it's going to feel real to you, but, but I just want to expose you and then you make your decisions. When we choose to focus on cost, we're typically living out of fear, lack, and doubt. Sorry guys. When we choose to focus on costs, we're typically operating out of fear, lack, and doubt. Okay, let me challenge you with something here. I'm watching this show on TV right now called Tyrant. Anybody else watch this show? It's a pretty cool show. I like it. Okay, well the president of, of like, what, what country is, I don't know, Abudin. The president of Abu Dhabi is like the, the star of the show, and he's dealing with the situation where his father just died. The guy is like a jerk, and his brother's from America, and he's trying to help him become not a dictator but a, a good president, right? Well, this guy drives around in a Lamborghini. He has a palace. He does whatever he wants. He flies wherever he wants. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you think he considers costs in any of this, his decision-making matters? No. Why not? Got the national budget because he's, <laughs> he's not really concerned with what things cost. He's living from a space where essentially money is not an issue and he can essentially have whatever he wants. Yes or no? Yes. And you've got to understand that there are people like that out there, that they're, they're living and they're walking this earth and they do not in any way, shape, or form have an issue with what something costs. Now, right away, here's what your subconscious mind will say. Yeah, but Danny, you don't understand. I don't make that much money. You Wait, hold on. You, you, but you don't get what's going on with me. See, it's different for those people because those people have, like, you know, all the money in the world. I don't have all the money in the world. Okay? Write down point number three. Just to be clear, we are in an industry where an unlimited amount 
of financial freedom is available for us. And if you're not in this industry, I want you, and you're watching us online, I want you to replace the word industry with country. So just to be clear, we are in a country, and we live in a country where an unlimited amount, what's the word? Unlimited. Un means no limit. An unlimited amount of resources and financial abundance is available to us. Is that a true statement, yes or no? Yes. It's an undeniable truth, yes or no? Yes. So then why are we worried about cost? If, if that's a true statement, then why are we worried about cost? And could it be, guys, here's where I'm going to challenge you. And here's where I'm going to challenge our audience out there. Could it be that the exact concern of what cost or of what something costs, could that be affecting other areas in our life? Because let's look back at the first, at point number two. When we choose to focus on cost, we typically choose to live out of fear and doubt. So if fear and doubt is available, and if fear or, or doubt is where we're operating from in this one area, do you think it's possible that it might be controlling other areas? Yes or no? Yes. yes. So let's talk about that for a second. What happens when we go out there and we're ready to pick up the phone? If fear and doubt is controlling our cost situation, do you think it might have an impact on our dialing situation, yes or no? Yes. It's undeniable. It's undeniable. What happens when we go out there and we sit in front of a seller for a listing presentation? If fear and doubt is controlling our money and cost situation, do you think there's a chance that we could be vibrating at a level of energy that causes the seller to have a little fear and doubt in us, yes or no? Yes. Does that impact our production? Yes. See, guys, when you look at it, guys, you, 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 you have got to understand that there is absolutely no you're, – you're not only in the greatest country on planet Earth, you also happen to be in the greatest industry in the greatest country on planet Earth. So as a result of this, we've, we've got to work some things out. We've got to work some things out. And we've got to work out where this thinking comes from. Yeah? Because if we don't work out where this thinking comes from, then we won't be able to take advantage of a lot of opportunities that, that I believe are out there and that are going to be out there for the next four years while this market is still hot. Write down point number four. When, we, when I choose to focus on value, When I choose to focus on value, I come from abundance limitless thinking and limitless possibility. When I choose to focus on value, I come basically from limitless thinking and abundance. Guys, let me let me give you a little secret. And for those of you in our audience, we have a real estate company here. There's about, I don't know, 50, 60 people here. And we do a pretty damn good job at helping people to do more. Let me give you a little secret as to why you do more when you come here. You do more when you come here because you finally wake up to the fact that you're in a limitless industry in the greatest country in the world. Half of the battle, guys, is your thought process. Half of the battle is I'm not going to do 24 deals a year ever again because that is easy. I deserve more. I've been in this industry for 10 years, and I've been doing 10 deals a year. Screw that crap. I deserve more. And what happens is you surround yourself with like-minded people, and you go, wait a minute. If that guy can do it or if she can do it, heck, I could do it too. And little by little, that's how we start working on this whole thing. Guys, when you choose value, guys, you're working from abundance. Let me give you a, a plain example, right? Gentleman A. Gentleman A, you're not going to like me, but deal with it. It's the honest to God truth, and I'm going to prove it to you. Gentleman A wants to buy a suit. How many of you guys ever bought a suit? Okay, great. Gentleman A wants to buy a suit. A gentleman A goes shopping for the suits. 
and he goes to Nordstrom's to buy a suit, and the suit costs a thousand bucks. Oh crap! That's a thousand dollars. That's a lot of freaking money. Who would agree? Yeah? yeah. So he makes a cost-conscious decision, and he goes out. He goes, you know what? I just heard that ad on the radio that for one ninety-nine ninety-nine, I can go get me three suits, three suits, three ties, three shirts. Three pairs of socks and three belts, and I can get my shoes shined three times. And a sandwich. And a sandwich. <laughs> not the sandwich is not real. No, no the sandwich is not real. But gentleman A decides to do what? He says, you know what? Let me go get that deal. Gentleman B goes, you know what? It's a thousand bucks, but damn it, I'm worth it. And when I walk in front of a seller, I want to feel amazing. I want to feel like I'm unstoppable. And I want them to know that they are dealing with the best professional in town. Be honest with me. Gentleman A shows up with his $399.99, 20 suits for 100 bucks. <laughs> Gentleman B shows up with the $1,000 suit. Who has an edge just by the way they look? Why? Confidence. Because he knows it. Because there's confidence, guys. Because there's confidence. Because there's something inside that says, you know what, man, I'm here and I'm, I'm ready. I'm hungry. I'm ready to rock and roll. Is gentleman A dealing from lack and fear, yes or no? Yes. Yes, because we make money decisions based off of what we think is possible for us or not monetarily. Is gentleman B dealing from lack or fear? No. Because gentleman B is dealing from, you know what, I believe in myself. I'm going to go out there and make this happen no matter what happens. So damn it, you know what, here, let's go. Vamonos. I'm I'm, I'm going to do this. Who has a better chance of making more sales, gentleman A or gentleman B? Why? Because he's invested in himself. Because he has an attitude of expectation. Gentleman B has an attitude of anything is possible for me. And do you think that clients feel that attitude, yes or no? I'm telling you, undeniably, yes, they do. Human beings can sense what we're thinking. They can sense what we're feeling. And they can sense what you feel about yourself. Now, the tough part is I'm not an expert at helping you get rewired. We go to Tony Robbins for that stuff. We go to Productive Learning and Leisure for that stuff. But I want to pose a challenge to you, and I want you to write this down. How much time do I spend working on me? How much time do I spend working on me? Because I'm going to challenge everybody with one thing. Listen, we're in the real estate industry, or for those of you watching, we're in the sales industry, or whatever the case it may be that you do. But I have a very, very big belief, and that is that your number one priority every single day needs to be the mastery of yourself. Not sales, guys. Not taking listings. Not making a loan. Not getting a title deal. Not anything other than the mastery of yourself. Who knows what I mean when I say the mastery of yourself? Yes. Professional working on how you are being as a person in every situation and circumstance. Whatever it is, your emotions, you're aware of it. Everything. You're aware of your thinking at every given moment. It's being aware of the way you think. It's knowing yourself enough to when you do get a negative thought, you go, hold on a second. That's stupid. Why am I thinking that? That's not me. I'm better than that. Let me push that aside. When you do get upset about something, you go, you know what, hold on a second. Wait, you know, I know they're upset, but they don't have to make me upset. You know what I'm saying? Where the person that is not working on this, guess what they do? Oh, my God, they're upset. I'm upset. I'm going to die. <laughs> and, like, their whole month is ruined. You guys have seen this, guys. Real estate agents are great at this. They let one little bad incident with the client ruin three months of production. And then they got to start all over again. And you guys know this business, it takes 90 days to get going. Do you guys get my drift? Yes. You guys understand the importance of this? Yes. Okay, so how do we work on ourselves? Let me give you guys a couple of tips real fast. Number one, read a book every month. Listen to me, guys. We have read so many books. And for those of you that are watching, this is a great book, Building a Successful Real Estate Career by Mike Ferry. I bought 100 copies for everyone in the office, and everyone read the book. But I will tell you this, some of you are not passionate enough to work on yourself that you didn't read the book. Because if you were passionate about working on yourself, would you have read the book? Yes. 
Oh yeah, you've already read the book. We've read books like The Four Agreements. If you have not read that book, that is a must-read book for any human being that wants to become successful in life. The Four Agreements. What other books have we read here that have impacted your life? Power versus Force. Must-read book. Goliath. Uh, David and Goliath. Goliath. Must-read book. Uh, Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. Must-read book. Um, the World's Greatest Salesman. Must-read book. Think and Grow Rich. Must-read book. Outliers. Must-read book. The Alchemist. Must-read book. Million Dollar Mindset. Must-read book. Brian Tracy, The Art of Closing the Sale. Guys, for crying out loud, you're salespeople. you got to read that book. Power of Habit. Power of Habit. We've read tons of books. And that's what we do as an organization to facilitate your growth. Does this make sense? Yeah. At the end of the day, it's your choice. But we try to do our best to facilitate your growth. You, at the end of the day, have got to step above and beyond. Don't just do what we ask you to do. you got to do more. Because you got to be so passionate about working on yourself that you're going to be doing things and you go, hey, Danny, why don't we go to this? That's when you'll know you're on. Does this make sense? So watch this, guys. I, 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 the, point number five, and this is something that we really have to do. We've got to rewire our mind to think of value versus cost. We've got to rethink our mind to think of value versus cost. Okay? And I will tell you, I did, a, I did a, a video on Real Estate Sales TV that talked about the power of mindset, and we actually did that this week at, in the business building class. And, you know, a lot of what, we're, what we think about has to do with the people that we surround ourselves with. You know? So I'll tell you right now, if you're on Facebook, and all of you guys have at least three people like this, you know these people that post these negative comments about, you know, the fist fight happened here and the kid got abused over here and the, the, I'm going to give you a challenge. You want to improve your life? Just unfriend them. Unfriend them. Because that's bringing no value to your life at all whatsoever, is it? No. It's actually hurting you. It's reinforcing the negativity and it's reinforcing the thought process that you have bought into that there's not enough money in this world. Yes or no? Yes. And if they ever ask you, hey, Say, Dino, why'd you unfriend me? You just say, you know what, man? I, I'm on a path to greatness. And some of the stuff you were posting, I'm sorry. I just can't have that in my life right now. That's a nice way of saying, like, get the hell away from me. <laughs> Isn't that true? Because we've got to consciously start working on rewiring our mindset. Guys, the last point, point number six. You have got to invest in personal development. And for some of you guys here, you're investing in personal development just by being a part of this office because we feed you guys this stuff over and over and over again. To our subscribers on Real Estate Sales TV, you're investing in yourself just by subscribing to our channel because we're constantly bringing videos over and over and over again. But I'm going to talk to you specifically about last week and what happened at the retreat and what happened to the seminar. Okay? I've got four sub-points that, that I'm going to write down. A, attendance of seminars. Write that down. <laughs> attendance of seminars we have a choice we can either think of cost or think of value so let me explain to you what happens and by the way if any of these things you made the decision not because of cost then forget about it but I'm almost 100% correct in thinking that it someone had to do with cost I have an opportunity to go to a seminar seminar cost I don't know 300 I don't care what the cost is to prove my point, Anthony Robbins is having a seminar in August. It costs $5,000. I'm inviting all of you to go with me. I'm signing up today. I don't care about the cost. I care about the value. If you want to come, let's go. It's called something business or something like that. Okay? Anyway, there's a seminar. It's $150 to go to the seminar. Okay? We're all going. The whole company is going. What happens? Oh, my God, I don't have money. Oh my God, but okay, I can go to the seminar, it's 150 bucks, and then I can do the room. The room costs 130 bucks, and then I have to divide that by four people because I'm going to sleep in the bathtub, so I only have to chip <laughs> 20 bucks in. 20 bucks times three nights is 60 bucks, and then I got to pay for the food. No, I don't have money. Do we do this, yes or no? Yes. yes. It's the honest to God truth. 
So we're so focused on the cost of not attending the seminar. What's the real cost of not attending the seminar? Can I tell you the real cost? Number one, your competition is going to kick your ass now. Because your competition was there, and your competition learned, and your competition believed enough in themselves, and they grew a little bit more just by being there. Mm -hmm. Number two, you could have been met with the people that would have challenged your life forever. You could have sat down next to a, a future mastermind partner. You could have had lunch with someone that you could have gone and shadowed someday. But we weren't at the seminar because we were thinking about 150 bucks. Number three, you could have learned the things or you could have listened to the example that said, you know what, man, if that lady could do it or if that guy can do it, that's it. It's my turn. I can do it. It could have been that one example that could have lit you up, that one thing that could have inspired you, but we're worried about 150 bucks. Do you get my drift? Yes. So what's the real cost, guys? Is it 150 bucks or is it the thousands of dollars that you could have earned by the principles that you would have learned by being there? What is it? I know it's tough, but think about it. Point number two, staying in the hotel. Oh my God, the Venetian. <laughs> it's 130 bucks. You know what? I have an idea. I'm going to stay at Hooters Hotel down the street. <laughs> hey, I'll have entertainment. Uh, I'll like what I see. And the room at Hooters is only $50 a night. And I'm going to invite my buddy Pepe to join me. And me and Pepe are going to split the room so it's only $25 a night. We're thinking cost. Yes or no? Yes. So let's think about the real cost that's going on. Number one, do you have to wake up earlier to drive to the event now? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, absolutely. How much time is your money worth? See, when you respect your time, and when you value your time, you think way differently, don't you? Number two, do you have to get there earlier to stand in line? Yes. Oh, yes, you do. Number three, the most powerful things that happen as these events is the people that you meet and that you get to brainstorm with and mastermind with. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, does anybody know who a gentleman by the name of Michael Young is? Yes. Michael Young will close about 280 transactions this year. Do you close 280 transactions? Okay, you get the picture? Michael Young, I'm on the treadmill. Michael Young is to my left. Hey, Michael Young, what's up? How are you? Good, where we start? All of a sudden, this guy named, what's your buddy's name? Jose Enrique. Jose Enrique pulls up right next to him. Jose Enrique is like a 22-year-old kid. How many deals will he do this year? 30 deals. How many years in the business? Five years in the business, 30 deals, okay? Out in Valencia, average sales price has got to be like 600000 or something like that, okay? He pulls up, and Michael Young spends 45 minutes with him on the treadmill asking, what else do you want to know? 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 I was listening. He just kept asking him, what else do you want to know? 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 How valuable is that? But you see, you can't be there, though, because you're staying at the Hooters Hotel. <laughs> Because you're trying to save some money. So you can't participate in that conversation because those conversations happen at the hotel when the superstars are there early in the morning at 5 o'clock. You're not going to drive all the way to the hotel to drive all the way back to drive all the way back to drive all the way back to change to go back. You're not going to do that. But you're thinking about the cost. That 130 bucks a night, oof, that's, that's a lot of money. I can guarantee you that that conversation was worth five to ten to fifteen to twenty to a hundred thousand dollars. You can't put a price tag, guys, on the information you learn and what happens when you apply it for years to come. Does this make sense? Yes. Point number three: upfront seating. Ooh, I'm passionate about this one. We all got an email. Email says if you want to sit up front, it'll cost you how much? Oh my God, three hundred fifty. $350. $350 to sit up front? No, that's why I'll sit back here in the back where you cannot see or hear anything. And we happen to be in an event where you have to see and hear things. So what happens? Well, we we're cost conscious, so we're thinking about the cost. We're thinking it's $350, bucks, right? Here's what I'm thinking. Or here's what I'm thinking. What's the real cost? Cost number one, write this down. 
you're not going to like this, but I love the living daylights out of you, and the only way I can tell you is to tell you the truth. So can I tell you the truth? Yeah. Automatically, listen to me, automatically, by not sitting on the front, what's the message that you are sending to yourself subconsciously? Those people are better than me. Message number two, I'm okay with being at the back. Because that's for those people. I sit back here. Do you know how much money it costs you when you think like that? You cannot put a price tag on it. You absolutely cannot put a price tag on it. It costs you hundreds of thousands of dollars by thinking that way, by letting yourself think that way. Because there's people out there that think the following way. I don't care what I have to pay. I'm not sitting back there. I'm sitting at the front. Yes or no? Yeah. Which is ultimately more valuable for you to sit at the front? Number two, do you have to wake up earlier than the people at the front? Yes, yeah, some of you guys were in line for an hour and a half. And do you know what I could do in an hour and a half? Do you know how much how valuable my time is? Do you know how valuable your time is? An hour and a half to stand in line? Well, you could have just walked in at 9 o'clock, put your book down, and sat down whenever you wanted to. You probably missed a workout or two, yes or no? Because you had to be there a little bit early because we thought about cost and we didn't want to spend the money. If you miss a workout, what's the, what's the cost of that on your body? You, you can't put a price tag on it. Do you guys see the difference, guys? Yes. There's cost versus value. I'm trying to challenge you here right now because there are other areas in your life where I guarantee you, you think cost versus value. And I, I, I implore you guys, you got to start thinking value. you got to start thinking, I trust myself. Number, number four, coaching. Coaching. Guys, I was 19 years old when I made the decision to pay $1,000 a month to, for somebody to coach me. I was in the back of that room just like everybody else. Okay? And at 19 years old, I didn't have the money to do it. So I called my mom, I got a credit card, and I figured it out. Why? Because I trust myself. I trust in me. I trust that I won't sleep until I make it happen. So whatever it costs me, it doesn't matter because I'm going to make it happen. Drop me off in a remote island. I'm going to make it happen. Drop me off in a brand new city. I'm going to make it happen. Does this make sense? But what happens is we think about costs. Guys, let me, let me help you understand something. This coaching program that we all could have got a part of, of a thousand bucks, it's been a thousand bucks since I was 19 years old. That means it doesn't cost a thousand bucks anymore. It costs like 600 or 500. Do you get that? Do you get that? The cost should be 12, 13, 1400 dollars, 1500 dollars for it to match what people were paying 20 years ago. But why don't we do it? Because, guys, we're human beings and we're controlled by this thing called the mind. And all we think is price and cost. Price and cost. So do you, do you get it now? Do you understand? Does everybody understand? Do you see how this is detrimental to your life? Do you see how this is detrimental to your future? Do you guys understand this? You, you guys do or not? You guys look like you're going to yeah. cry or something. <laughs> you guys still with me, right? Okay, then here is the challenge, and here are some things we need to work on, okay, to fix the situation. Number one, you got to answer this question. Where did I learn to deal with money the way that I deal with it now. It came from somewhere, guys. Because I'll tell you right now, my kids that are six, seven years old, they think there's money everywhere. Every week they ask me for a toy. Don't your kids? Right? Every week. They think money's not an issue. Every day. Every day. Are we going to the toy store? 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 So do they think there's an issue with money? No. no. And don't go, well, that's because you have money. Stop it. 
Everybody's kids do this. You could be broke and your kids want stuff because they don't get it. They don't get our hangups as adults about money. Does this make sense? Somewhere in their little minds, they think, you know what? I want something, so I should have it. So where did you learn your story? I, re I remember when I learned mine. I learned mine because my mom and dad fought, and my dad, my mom wanted to buy a house, and my dad wanted to build a business, and as a result, they got divorced. And I always, my story was, I'm never going to fight about money because if I do, I get divorced. I, I'm, I'm, you know, not thankful about the divorce. I'm thankful about the story it created in my head because it worked opposite for me. Does this make sense? I learned at a young age, I'm not going to do that because then I get divorced. And I don't want to feel that pain. That's where my story came from. You got to find out where your story came from. And is your story empowering you or depowering you? Only you can figure that out. Number two, you need to figure out, this is very important, what are the instances in your life where a cost consciousness has held you back? And guys, we can think about a lot of stuff. What are the instances in your life where a cost consciousness has held us back? And listen to me. This is going to be difficult for you. It's going to be difficult for you because you think that the way you think is valid. In other words, you walk into a restaurant, right? You see the menu and you th in your brain you think that it is a perfect, reasonable thing to look at the price and to not get the most expensive thing. That's, you, you think that's normal. Remember, Donald Trump doesn't think that's normal. Donald Trump thinks it's normal to do the opposite. He thinks it's normal to just get whatever he feels like. So understand that there's just a way of thinking that you think is normal. You need to challenge yourself when it comes to work, when it comes to lifestyle, when it comes to clothing, when it comes to automobiles, when it comes to seminars, when it comes to books, when it comes to trips, when it comes to whatever it is, think, where is this impacting my life? Where am I secretly giving my subconscious mind a message that says I'm not worth it? And you need to challenge yourself. Because if you don't challenge yourself, guys, here's what's going to happen. You're going to keep reinforcing that you're not worth it. And I'm telling you guys, you guys are like God's greatest creation. You are like, you're worth so much that you, you, you can't even comprehend how much you're worth. But somewhere along the line, you, you got tricked into thinking that that wasn't true. Does this make sense? So that's number two, challenge yourself. Number three. And I don't have an exact title for you, but I want you to pick up a book, whatever it is, in the personal development section of Audible or of Google and start reading. Start reading. You've got to start improving yourself. Guys, all of this stuff, nobody taught it to us in school. You know what I'm saying? So we are in charge and we are responsible for teaching ourselves. We literally have to be reprogramming ourselves on a daily and weekly and monthly basis because the crap we learned at school, I'll be honest, you know what we learned at school? We learned to associate ourselves with some people. We learned to feel nervous and decide things that we didn't necessarily want to do. We learned how to deal with bullies. We learned how to, you, you get the picture? We learned so much crap in school just from people that didn't understand themselves that now it's causing us to be who we are. So you have to like relearn yourself. And the only way to do that is to start a journey. Because remember, guys, we're in the greatest country in the world where you can make all the money you want. You can have everything that you want. You're in the greatest industry in the world. Let's just get that clear. So if that's true and you're struggling, then there's, there's a disconnect there. And that disconnect needs to be addressed. And last but not least, guys, listen. This is like my mission. This is what I work for. This is what I love to do. If you're open, I'll be open and I'll help you with it. Email me, or if you're what you guys have my email. If you're watching us online, I don't care how many people it is. I love this. I absolutely do. Just go to our our our, our Facebook page, Real Estate Sales TV, and just shoot me a private message, and we'll work through it. And I will promise you this: I may go. You know what? You know that issue right there. 
I, I don't, I'm not that good at that issue. I'll be honest with you. But I know someone who is. Go check it out. Does this make sense? For those of you guys that have joined us here uh, online, thank you so much. My goal is to host at least one of these a month live. It's going to be recorded and it will be on the YouTube channel. Share it with all your friends because I think it will help a lot of people. Bye-bye.